Hello everybody, hope you are doing well. Welcome to a new race, a new tournament in fact. Let's not waste any time and get right into the first group. We have Ryan Kelly, Big Bishop, the People's Champion, and Speedball Herman. Here we go, the tournament is officially underway. It looked like Big Bishop had a slight lead, but Speedball Herman comes up behind him and takes the first win. You'll also notice very quickly that the track is a lot shorter this time around. And as a result, we have a total of eight groups racing today. And the winner of each of those groups will advance to the next part of the tournament. But Speedball Herman takes the first win with a 2.5. Let's see if he can do any better in this race. Also, for any of you Back to the Future fans, it looks like Ryan Kelly is driving the Mandalorian. And he's currently in third right now as Speedball Herman takes yet another win. And he finishes with another 2.5. It's pretty rare that a race will finish at the exact same time, especially consecutively. But they managed to pull it off already and we're just beginning this tournament. Here we go into heat number three, everyone has switched lanes, and here we go! Speedball Herman is doing something right because they get a slight lead right at the beginning and that pays off. And they already have three consecutive wins, meaning there is no way for them to lose and they will automatically move on. And they grabbed a slightly faster time this time around of 2.46. So now this next race will be a victory lap, while the other three have already fallen short. The final race, can Speedball Herman stay undefeated? It looks like he will, yes! And Ryan Kelly finished in second that time around, Big Bishop in third, and the People's Champion in fourth. And they got a slightly quicker time of a 2.45. That is now the time to beat. And we have seven other groups racing today. Anything could happen. Congratulations to Speedball Herman. And now, here's the second group. We got Hot Wheels Boys, Joe Pluto, Button Boys Racing, and D-Boom. The race is now underway and Joe Pluto is quickly falling behind as D-Boom takes the first win of this group. Looks like Joe Pluto may have been built more for show as opposed to speed. Meanwhile, D-Boom finishes with a 2.45. They are tied for the fastest time set by the first group winner. Here we go, heat number two. Everyone switched around, the race is underway, and it looked like Joe Pluto started off at least relatively well, but they lost all that speed almost instantly as D-Boom takes the second win. Finishing with a 2.46, that is almost the exact same time, off by .01. And now D-Boom only needs one more win to move on automatically. Can anybody stop him? Here we go, third race, D-Boom already has the lead, and no one is able to catch him! D-Boom might have to be called Sonic Boom from this point forward, because they are going ridiculously fast. Finishing once again at a 2.45. Gotta give him props for consistency. So they will automatically be moving on. The other three racers, they can at least try to stop him from being undefeated, however. But it looks like D-Boom has something going for him as they start off strong every time and they take four consecutive wins. Two groups have gone, two undefeated racers so far. And look at that, another 2.5. Or 2.45, my apologies. But now we are a quarter of the way through the groups. Here is the third one for today. We have Wes Cosin, Lero Reed. Ken Doucet, or Doucet, I'm not entirely sure, and Numsko. If I mispronounce that, I sincerely apologize. But it looks like Numsko will take the first win this time around. In fact, they were so overjoyed, they almost crossed the finish line going backwards again. And now they have the fastest time of a 2.42. Here we go into heat number two. Numsko is now in lane one. Let's see if that makes any sort of a difference. Right now, they do have a bit of a lead. West Coast is trying to catch him, unable to pull it off. So it looks like all the racers, for the most part, have been pretty consistent. And Numsko finished with a 2.43. And now Numsko just needs one, one more win to move on. Here we go into heat number three. 
Numbskull already has the lead and is quickly pulling away as the other three fall behind relatively fast. And Numbskull will be the next one to move on in this tournament. And like with the previous two groups, just because they're moving on does not mean they will stay undefeated. The other three still have a chance to dethrone him early. The question is, will they be able to do it? And here we go, Numbskull takes a huge lead right off the bat, and they will get four consecutive wins. And it looks like West Coasten actually got derailed slightly, and not sure exactly where it happened. Let's see if the replay shows it. I guess after they hit the cushion at the end, they must have gotten over the edge of their own track. But Numbskull will be moving on, and now, here's a fourth group to close off the first half of today. We have Black Skull. Papa Pugsley, Speedy McGee, and Craigster Sr. Oh, speaking of Craigster, it looks like he will take the first win. And a time of 2.5. It looks like all these racers are at least going to be well in competition with each other. Because everyone's finishing somewhere between 2.45 or 2.5 just about. But Craigster Sr. has that first win. I'm sure Black Skull wants to be the second Skull-themed racer to move on in this tournament. But he's going to be struggling to do so as Craigster Sr. takes yet another win. They will need to finish in front of Craigster if they want to move on and join Numskull in the next phase of the tournament. But Craigster Sr. just needs one more win. Can they pull it off? It looks like they might have had a chance for a second, but Craigster takes off yet again. And now Papa Pugsley once again finishes in second, and any chance Black Skull had to move on and join Numbskull is dashed. So Craigster Sr. will be the next one to move on. We already have the next, f the first four racers in this tournament moving on to the next stage of it. And now Craigster Sr. It looked like Papa Pugsley was about to give him some competition, but struggled to do so after they went down the hill. And Craigster Sr. is also undefeated. Four in a row. All finishing within that same time frame. I think we had one or two racers finish with about a 2.43. But it's still pretty close. And now for the fifth group. Something that isn't often seen in a tournament like this. Matt McNear, Cleveland City Diecast, Donna Murphy, and Sneaky Bob 5. It looks like Sneaky Bob 5 is sneaking his way to a first place win. And he's moving so fast, he actually almost went across the finish line again. And they finished with a 2.44. Not quite the fastest time, I don't think, but they were pretty close. So they will take the first win. Cleveland City Diecast finished in second. Let's see if they can do any better this time. And here we go! Sneaky Bob once again takes off, leaving the other three in the dust. And they will get their second consecutive win. Finishing yet again at a 2.44. This is probably the most consistent I've seen a bunch of racers in the same video. But Sneaky Bob 5 is almost ready to move on, they just need another win. And we're only in the third heat. But look at the... Oh, I thought that was Sneaky, Fo Sneaky Bob on the end. But no, he was in lane number three, and he got another win, just like he needed. So he will automatically move on the other three. Their time in this tournament is over. And Sneaky Bob finished with a 2.46 that time. On average, that is about a 2.45. That is really good. But here we go, the last race, a victory lap for Sneaky Bob, possibly, and it looks like they are going to keep that undefeated streak alive. So even though the other three did not move on, they at least remain consistent, like Sneaky Bob 5. Interesting that Sneaky Bob 5 was in group number 5, and they are the one to move on. And now for group number 6. Jesse the Taurus, Road Rage. Route 66 diecast and J Bo. I'm loving the designs on these vehicles, and right now J Bo is the one in the lead, and Route 66 finished in second. 
Hopefully Road Rage won't be experiencing too much actual Road Rage, otherwise they could be making decisions they won't be able to take back. And j Bo finished with one of the slower times we've seen today with a 2.52. But that is not saying much considering that's not too far off from the average. And now for race number two, j Bo is trying to keep that streak alive and it looks like he will be able to do it. As Route 66 tries to catch him, but doesn't actually finish too far in front of the other two. And j Bo finished slightly slower that time with a 2.55. A very close call between Road Rage and Jesse the Taurus, but it looks like Road Rage still got third place. And now for heat number three. They take off. It looks like j Bo was actually going to start losing some ground to Jesse the Taurus, but it completely flipped as j Bo finished in first yet again, and Jesse the Taurus finished in last. Looked like Jesse was going to make something happen, but unfortunately, after going around... That little dip towards the finish line, they lost all the speed they had. And now j Bo will automatically move on. The other three are just trying to stop him from having an undefeated streak. They have the possibility to do it. In fact, here comes Route 66, trying to stop him, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And j Bo finishes with another undefeated streak. So far, every racer that has won a race in this video has not lost one. But j Bo is one of the slower ones we've seen today that may come back to bite them later on. But for now, here is the seventh group. We have Red Pill, Eric Hovland, El Macho, and Little Fritter. For all you Despicable Me fans, El Macho may be a reference to Despicable Me 2's great villain. But it looks like they will not be too macho moving on in this tournament because I don't even know if they will be moving on as they finished in last, actually. Actually, no, it looks like they finished in third. They were trailing behind for a second, but I guess they managed to pull off third place. But Little Fritter is the one who takes the first win. Will they join the group of undefeated racers, or would they be the first one to be dethroned? And as I say that, it looks like Red Pill is going to dethrone him, and he pulls it off. The first group in this video, without an undefeated racer, Little Fritter, finished first in the first leg, but was unable to do so in the second. So now Red Pill and Little Fritter are tied. This just made things a lot more interesting. Red Pill is now giving Little Fritter a run for their money. Can they do it again? They are in the two center lanes. It looks like Red Pill has a slight lead. I don't know if he's gonna hold on to it. I think he did. Let's check the replay just to be sure. But they are finishing pretty close to the average time. I think that's going to be given to Red Pill. But it looks like Red Pill did get that one at least. So I'm thinking he will be the one to move on, and he does. So now we only have one group left to fill out a spot. And in that group we have Brian Oldford, Team Thunder, Onsid Racing, and Stompin'. Stompin' I'm sure wants to stomp their competition, but they are not quite going to do that as Brian takes the first win. And it looks like Team Thunder wasn't too happy as they clapped. Brian off of that track a little bit. Finishing with a 2.47, Brian has the first win. Six out of seven groups so far have remained undefeated. I'm sure Brian would like to be the seventh. And he does have a slight lead. Stompin' almost had him, but was unable to get up in front of him at the last possible moment. And Brian does take the second win. One more win, and they will be moving on. And Team Thunder has some work to do as well as Onset Racing. Or Nsaid Racing. Again, I apologize if I mispronounce any names. Feel free to let me know how to properly pronounce them in the comments below. But Brian Oldford does take the third win. They will be moving on. It's just a matter of trying to keep that streak going. And they finish with a time of 
2.48, once again, right on the average. They just need this last race here. Stompin' was giving them a little run for the money near the beginning. And now Stompin' is actually out in front of him. Can he stop him from being undefeated? No, it looks like Brian was able to pull out in front of him just in time to get the undefeated streak. So now we have eight racers moving on. Seven of them are undefeated. Here are all the racers that advanced in today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time. Oh, 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 oh,